Welcome back to the YouTube channel here, the FFR YouTube channel. And we're actually, uh, we have our rear hoop assembly uh, done in the last video. And now in this video, we're gonna start putting this inside the car. Okay, so we have this uh, rear hoop assembly. We went ahead and we put the halo on, we have the hoop. And on a two door car, you can pre-assemble the hoop and the halo um, because you can get it in through the door. And so that's what we did here. We got it in position. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, trimming the car. So almost all of these cars, with the exception of maybe the Cavalier and a few others, you're gonna to have to do some trimming of the factory bodywork in order to get the cage where we want it to be. Um, it's a compromise. If we, if we make the cage narrower, now we're gonna be moving away from our pinch weld, which is the strongest part of the, the tub here. And we're gonna be moving inward, which means we'd have to build more structure in there in order to support the weight or the, the force of the cage if it goes into a rollover. So we want to stay wide, but we're going to run into some obstacles by doing that. On the RSX here, it's this guy right here. So there's a piece on the inside that sticks out. That's going to keep us from tipping the cage in place. Um, once that's removed, what we would find when we tip it in place is we want the cage to be back here, uh, somewhat close to this factory B pillar. So when we go to put our door bars on, our door jam is now going to be in the way. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and trim this whole section out right here to make room for the cage to go in. But also when we get to the door bar section, we'll have clearance for the door bars to come in and weld all the way around them. Um, at this point, I'd like to take a minute to talk about welding all the way around a tube. Um, we assembled this outside of the car we have to do some finish welding on it yet. We'll take it out of the car and do that. So if you see some welds that aren't done, that's why. But um, it's important to weld completely around a tube. And the reason for that is when the tube gets stressed, so you have a joint. If you can imagine that joint is, um, the weak part is going to be near the weld. So if you put pressure on that joint, what it's gonna wanna do is it's gonna wanna pull away from this intersection, the part that it's tied to. If it's not welded completely there, it creates a, a, it creates a void where the metal can start to tear around the weld instead of uh, the forces being pushed back down to the other side. So what we want to do when we're building these cars is make sure like in this scenario, we're going to gut this out. So when we put those door bars in, we can get all the way around that door bar. If it gets hit in the side and you don't have the outside edge of this door bar welded, and the door bar wants to go in and wants to fold in, it's gonna to wanna to start to tear away from the hoop and actually fail on the metal and uh, instead of putting the force back to the other side of the door bar and into the hoop. Um, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions about that, feel free to email, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and gut this out and uh, get started on the next phase. Okay, we're gonna talk about putting the seat belt tabs on. Um, we're gonna put them on this right now. Uh, we have the hoop out of the car. This is that new adjustable um, lower seat mount deal we were talking about. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I put the tabs on and where I normally put them. Um, so the belt manufacturer will have a recommendation for where the belts should be mounted and uh, the angle that the belt should come up around the seat. Um, for me, it normally, when you put on the, the belt here, it's gonna be right at the front of that curve. And so when the seat sits in, the hole for the belt will be right here. So it's nice and straight coming right around the, right around the waist. Um, but when you're building your car, you should get the seat in, you should have the driver in, and then you should, uh, you should verify that this is gonna be in the correct position so that the belt isn't stretched too far out or it's not pinched up at the wrong angle. Uh, but the key is we want that, when we put all this together and the seat in, we want that seat belt to come up and around the waist of the driver. We don't want it, uh, you know, in the car, this is gonna end up being out here. We don't want the seat belt way out here. Sometimes you see that where you get a long stretch before it gets to the driver. Um, you want it as close as possible uh, based on the recommendation of the seat belt manufacturer. All right, so we've got our uh, rear hoop pushed up in place here. We've trimmed out our body. So now we'll have clearance for the door bars to go in. 
On that side, we just ended up using a hammer to make clearance there in that little bit. Uh, you can trim it out. It's uh, really a preference when you're building the car. So what we're gonna do here, uh, you see how this halo fits. Most of the cars with our cages are gonna fit somewhat similar right here. They're gonna be just on the other side of that brace in the, in the roof. Um, there are some cars that you have to, there's just more structure here and you have to trim all that out in order to get the halo up and away from the driver as much as possible. But we're at a good 90 degrees here. We're tied up against the roof there. So what we're gonna start doing now is we're gonna start putting our A pillars in place. All right, so we have our hoop in place. We've got our A pillars out. We have uh, basically what we've done, this is a Frontier 50 kit. So it comes with two passenger side uh, door bars. And so basically what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take and we're going to put the straight passenger side door bar along the, our foundation. So along our angle iron here, we haven't welded the, anything in yet. And we're gonna get this A pillar about to the right uh, length. Now, is it gonna be perfect? No, what we're looking for here is to get it pretty close and we're gonna go ahead and tack the top in so we don't, so we, it won't move. And then once the top that is tacked in, we're gonna go ahead and start fitting our door bars in. And when we put our door bars in, we have a few tools we can use. We have ratchet straps, uh, bar clamps, uh, different things like that to get them in, uh, to close the gaps down and all that. So uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, but when we go to tack this in, what we're looking for here is the A pillar goes in in this orientation. So the curve, uh, it comes out and curves in. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make sure we don't have any big gaps. So. We have a big gap that we know okay wait a minute something's going on here it won't sit in the middle of this curve it's going to be sitting along the back side here a little bit so uh that's that's normal on the a pillar when you look at it the profile of the notch the notch is actually at a bit of an angle uh, some cage kits have more of an angle than others but basically that is to account for the fact we're not going to be all the way in we want to try to keep the a pillar we want it to be you get too far along the side back here, it loses its, uh, its effectiveness. We wanna be close, but we also wanna keep in mind uh, driver visibility. So we wanna try to have it tucked in by this A-pillar as close as possible. All right, so we have our A-pillar tacked in place. And what we're gonna start doing now is we're gonna start fitting our door bars in. Um, so the way I normally do this is I will usually start off uh, every car is a bit different, but you're usually going to fall just below this crossbar here. There's really no uh, no set rule on where to start it. Um, you just want to make sure you have room at the bottom and then room at the top. If you get a four door bar kit, so if you buy an extra door bar, you're going to end up pretty close down here. In fact, most cars, most four cylinders anyway, you're going to be almost right down on this rocker with that fourth door bar. So. Uh, this is a three door bar kit, so we're going to start about 20 inches up from the bottom and we're going to work our way down. Before you weld anything solid on doing door bars, you got to make sure everything's going to fit. Because once you weld it, you're kind of committed, right? So we're going to put it in, we're going to set it, we're going to tack it, we're going to check it, we're going to do that process two or three times. Um, one thing to keep in mind, so most of these cars slope down, so the doors aren't straight. So. Um, when you put the door bars in straight and you look in from the side of the car, the door bars look like they're in here like this. So just keep that in mind. What I like to do in the shop is I'll actually, I'll tip this down a skosh. I won't go usually the full angle that the car has, but, and it's just a visual thing. When you look at it from the side, it looks, oh man, those things look nice in there. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, so we're gonna start here and we're gonna uh, start kind of tacking some of this together and we're gonna see what we got. We have our door bars tacked in place, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what you'll run into putting door bars in. So uh, we had our hoop in, it was square, we had everything in. We tacked this in, and then we kind of let everything hang loose. So uh, the next important part was to get the door bars and start tacking them in. So we put uh, our top door bar in, uh, we measured it up like we had talked about a minute ago. And then we took a ratchet strap and we went around the bottom from the, from the hoop around the A pillar and then we put our uh, the next bar in our we put our passenger side door bar back in or if you don't have these you can put one of these in at the bottom and we just hold it snug 
it was about what a three inch gap or so yeah. when we first started and then uh some of that could be the rear hoop was laid back a bit this was a bit tipped forward so if it fights you really hard there's something going on right this pulled in fairly easy wasn't much to it and uh, so if it moves easy then you're, you're probably good so we tacked it in visually making sure everything still looks nice and square and straight uh, which it does so what we're going to do now is we're going to start uh i think i like it do you like it i love, I love it. it all right so we're going to start <laughs> we're going to start walnut together so uh this is an important thing too if you're doing it by yourself don't look at it from just this perspective and then start welding. Uh, I'm fortunate enough here, I got eyes from all different angles here, but get up, walk around, and just make sure nothing got out of place. And uh, if everything still looks good, then you can start welding. So what we're gonna do now is we left, so we put these in here as space holders, placeholders for the door bars. We did not weld them in yet. And I'm gonna talk about how I do it. This is, in the race car building world, this is a, uh, it's a major debate. It's one of them hot button items that sometimes will start a debate. The way I like to do this, I run my vent bar. So it connects the A pillar and the top door bar. The importance of this bar cannot be underestimated. Uh, this really triangulates your whole A pillar setup. If you don't have this bar in here mm. and you get into a rollover and this part of the roof gets impacted, which in these cars, that's what happens. When they flip over because they're so front heavy, when they land, it's either gonna be the passenger side or the driver's side corner up here on the roof is gonna be the first part that's gonna make contact with whatever it's coming down on. Um, with a long stretch of tubing unsupported, it's usually not, uh, not ideal. In this particular case, it's a long stretch of tubing unsupported that has a bend. A bend is not going to be one of your strongest points in a roll cage, right? It's a necessity because, you, you know, it's the strongest way of making this curve uh, rather than make, putting a joint there or something along those lines. But you've created a, uh, a bend in the metal, which when it wants to, if it gets hit and it wants to come down, this would be the point that it's going to want to continue to bend in, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put this vent bar in here. And that's going to help support that angle. So it takes the, uh, if, you, if, if you can imagine the energy, it comes down on the roof of the car. The energy is sent down the cage A pillar. And some of the energy is sent back through the halo. But what it's going to do here, instead of going straight down and causing a problem here, it's going to spread this now. It's going to come this direction and this direction and it's gonna spread that force down. You may still end up with a kink in the cage, but you've now spread it out over several points. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is, and the way I like continuing this conversation of spreading out the force, I like to line up, we call these P1s, the door bar spacers. I like to line them up directly underneath the vent bar just to give that energy as it comes down and runs down this bar the further away it goes, the more it, uh, it absorbs it, right? But we want to try to absorb it through as many different points as we possibly can, many different bars as we can. So that's my idea. Some people prefer to stagger these, so they might run them like in like this and two out like that. Uh, some guys like to run three of these. And if you like to run three, we could certainly uh, sell you a couple more. Um, it's, that's really preference there. Uh, we don't see failures where the door bar gets hit and we didn't have enough spacers or anything like that. That's really a uh, preference for whoever's building the chassis. So, um, yeah, so I think that uh, sums that up. You guys have any input? Or? Well, while we're here talking about it. Make your own door plates. Yep, I was going to say. Plates and that plate even helps absorb all that energy too. So. Yeah, not as critical where these are if you're plating this thing. That's yeah, true, yeah. But Larry does offer that plate as an add-on for his kits if you guys want that uh, additional That's plating correct. on the side. Yep, yep, we do have the plates available, and uh, yeah. All right, so we moved around to the passenger side of the car. Uh, pretty straightforward, same deal. We ended up, uh, we put the A-pillar on. We laid the bottom do uh, door bar down. We set the length. This one, there was a little gap here. We ended up using the ratchet strap to pull everything square and straight. And then we went ahead and tacked it in place. Uh, we put the vent bar in. Again, preference, we lined it up with the vertical support. 
Um, so now what we're going to talk about is when we went to put this A pillar in, we had a little gap at the top. It's not uncommon. When you're welding on uh, tubing, uh, as the welds cool, you're going to get things that are going to move a little bit. And what ends up being just a little bit here ends up being potentially a quarter inch on this end. It's just uh, over the length of the run, right? So uh, what we did was we took a, uh, a flat bar. Right there, yeah. And on this car, it had a sunroof, which was convenient. And I just uh, pushed that cage down a little bit. And then they went ahead and uh, tacked it together. Um, when they come around to weld it, uh, you can see here, we have a little bit of a gap down here. It's going to be kind of the same thing. We go to, we go to weld it in place, get it where you want it, everything's straight. And then we can flatten it down onto the, the frame and weld it on. So now we're going to move on to the dash bar. And then we're going to do our Earnhardt bar. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about the seat at the end. So man, still learning a ton. We're on the final steps though. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. So we're moving on to one of the final videos, getting this center bar in for the uh, front dash and then wrapping everything up. So appreciate everybody and uh, we'll see you in the next one.